mission has a rich and diverse heritage, which includes public places and a historic business district, which collectively gives citizens a sense of place and unique cultural identity. This video features photographs housed in the archives dating from the 1900s to the 2000s, documenting Mission's evolving cultural landscape that lie within the traditional, ancestral, unceded, and shared territories of the Lacamel, Matsqui, Kwantlen, and Skolitz peoples. The iconic CPR Bridge opened in the 1890s when the city of Mission was only a clearing. Serving as the first railway link to the USA from BC, Mission was transformed into a boomtown and a major transportation link across the Fraser following its planking for single-lane vehicle traffic in 1927. Today, the bridge is only used to carry rail traffic. Its dual role for transporting trains and vehicles controlled by a traffic light came to an end on July 7, 1973, when the four-lane Mission Bridge was opened by Premier Dave Barrett. Following the development of Mission as a railway town, settlement increased. Among the early pioneers was John Alexander Catherwood, a highly esteemed individual and exceedingly influential politician who formulated the resolution that resulted in the incorporation of the municipality of Mission in 1892. His homestead was located on the corner of Stave Lake Street and Dudney Trunk Road. Today, the City of Mission Municipal Hall is located where Catherwood homesteaded. Built at a cost of $356,000, the hall was officially opened on November 2nd, 1974 by John's daughter, Edith, who cut the ceremonial ribbon. For more than six decades, First Avenue served as Mission's principal retail and commercial thoroughfare. In 1908, a cement block building was constructed on the northwest corner of First Avenue and Grand Street at a cost of $12,000. Known as the Windebank Block, it was named after its owner whose numerous enterprises included establishing Mission's first electric power system which was housed in the basement. Repurposed over the decades after surviving two fires, today the building is the oldest one on First Avenue and houses multi-unit suites, aptly named the Powerhouse Apartments. A First Avenue landmark for 40 years, the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce was built and opened in 1907, serving as the only chartered bank in mission until after World War I. Architecturally designed to symbolize power, money, and stability, the bank was a prefab building with a sectional system of pre-painted panels that was transported by train and assembled on the property. Today, the site houses the second premises of the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. Built in 1947, the brick and concrete building was part of numerous construction projects in the downtown area, totaling over half a million dollars. In the next block, where First Avenue intersects with Welton Street, was Mission's first jewelry store. Owned and operated by a Mr. J.B. Fadid, the business carried a full line of silverware, cut glass, high-grade watches, etc., and offered a full line of repair services. Today, this is the location of the Scotiabank. Opened in 1947, it cost $10,000 to build and has the distinction of being the 10th branch established in the province. At the end of the block on the northwest corner of First Avenue and Horn Street was Mission's first Dairy Queen. Opened in the summer of 1958, the new business was promoted as the most modern in Canada, with all supplies coming from Canadian manufacturers and, when possible, obtained through local outlets. On the site today is the first Tim Hortons restaurant in Mission. Opened in 1998, the building was designed to incorporate the heritage character of the downtown area by evoking a 1920s to 30s theme. In 2008, owners Kelvin and Lee Adams received an award of recognition from the Mission Community Heritage Commission for the building's design. On the south side of First Avenue at Horn Street is Pioneer Garage's new facilities when it opened in 1954, following its expansion to become a Chrysler Plymouth Fargo truck dealership. 
a landmark business on First Avenue. It was opened in 1940 by Fred Newton and Tom DeRoe, who initially sold gas and provided motor vehicle servicing. Still in its original location today, Pioneer Garage added Jeep to its product line in 1994 and has the distinction of being the oldest Chrysler dealership in British Columbia. Up Horn Street on the northwest corner of 2nd Avenue was the location of Mission's original swimming hole. Fed by Lane Creek, the pool was developed as part of Lane Creek Nature Valley Park, which was officially opened on June 4th, 1933. Today, the site is the location of the Mission Library, which opened on February 15th, 1994. Attended by 2,000 people, the new facility included a state-of-the-art speech synthesizer for the visually impaired, funded by the Elks and Kinsmen Clubs of Mission, Mission Friends of the Library, and the National Library of Canada. Just west of the library, on the east side of Welton Street, was the first constructed police station and motor vehicle branch. Opened in 1947, the building housed police officers, including an adjoining one for the constable in charge, a cell block, a courtroom, motor licenses office, and washrooms. Today, Welton Towers is located on the site. Opened on December 19, 1973, the 10-story 62-unit building was the first high-rise and non-profit seniors housing complex in Mission. When it opened, rents were set at $72 for single suites and $87 for doubles. Up the Welton Street stairway off 2nd Avenue was the original Mission Central School, which was built in sections between 1911 and 1913. The impressive bell tower over the main entrance was later removed due to safety concerns because of its weight and relocated beside the school. On the same site today is the new Mission Central, which was constructed and opened in 1990. Designed in accordance with the Ministry of Education's new construction regulations, Mission Central was among the first schools built in the community to have space allocated for a computer lab, a special education center, and French immersion. Heading north on Welton Street up to 7th Avenue and then to Grand was Alexandra Park, the first one in the downtown area. The land was originally purchased by the Mission Agricultural Association for staging an annual fair featuring displays of homegrown products and crafts, livestock shows, sports events, live entertainment, and a midway. Held from 1910 to 1999, it remains the longest running event in Mission's history. Today, the Mission Leisure Center is located on the property where it continues to serve as a central gathering place for people of all ages and cultural backgrounds to be entertained, celebrate, and showcase their abilities, achievements, beliefs, citizenship, creativity, ethnicity, milestones, products, talents, traditions, and services. West of downtown Mission on the Low Heat Highway at Wardrop Street was the Highlight Burger Bar. Opened in July 1956 by Nick Nicholson, a well-known local restaurateur, the burger bar served just about every tasty food drive-in fans could imagine, including chicken drumsticks, long hot dogs, burgers, and milkshakes. The diner was the first drive-in and later 24-hour restaurant in Mission. The iconic 1950s-themed business is still in operation today on the same site under the name Rocco's Diner. It is renowned for its 40 flavors of milkshakes and as a filming location. In 2017, USA Today named the diner one of Canada's top 10 filming locations. The Mission Community Archives hopes you have enjoyed discovering how vast timberlands and buildings that were once here have been developed and repurposed while a few places have remained relatively the same. If you or someone you know can contribute historic photographs and information about Mission, please contact Val Bilsberger at the Mission Community Archives at 604-820-2621 or by email at manager at missionarchives.com.